What's up everybody? Welcome back to Exotic Astrology. Nice to see you back. And today we shall discuss on a very important topic which one person had asked me once upon a time and I had noted this question. And the question is, I do not have any planet in this particular nakshatra, in any XYZ nakshatra. So I don't need to study it. Or why should I see videos on that nakshatra? Yes. So that's the question and the answer I will try to give here. All right. So if you are new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed, then please subscribe to it. And if you want a consultation, then please approach me through my website. The link is there in the description below. And before I begin, as I always say, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and he will be there. And he will also help you understand why you should study all the nakshatras, even if you do not have any planets. Yes, posited there or you do not have any single planet also. So now, basically, I have not started the series on nakshatras. I mean, I have personally not made videos on them. I will be making on them very soon. But as of now, I would give an introduction of what nakshatras are. Maybe, maybe not very much in detail, but nakshatras are what basically they are parts of the zodiac sign. They actually make up a zodiac sign. Yes, the zodiac sign, uh, you can't say that zodiac sign has nakshatras. You can't say that. Actually, it is the nakshatras which combine and make up a zodiac sign because whenever you search for traits of a zodiac sign, then you will see that, oh, this zodiac sign is like this, this zodiac sign is like that. Yes. And some people, even if they have the same planet in the zodiac sign, they behave differently. Of course, depending on other combinations and depending on other placements. But why is it that even if the zodiac sign is same, they are behaving differently? This is because the nakshatra within the zodiac sign is different. It's like saying the home is the same, but within the home, there are different places where you go. You may be in the drawing room, you may be in the dining room, or you may be in the bedroom. So your behavior, even inside the home, is different when you are in different places. So that's why it is important that uh, we study planets not only through zodiac signs, we study them through the nakshatras, yes? So for example, suppose there is a planet in Aries, but it is in Ashwini nakshatra. So that flavor is going to be completely different. When I say complete, I mean totally different. Then a planet which is in Aries, which is in Bharani nakshatra, or then a planet which is in Aries, which is in Kritika nakshatra. So I will discuss in detail about the technical specifications of nakshatras in another video that I will be starting very soon. But this is simply to say that we may not have planets because at max we can have only how many nakshatras? 10 nakshatras because our ascendant will be in a particular nakshatra within the zodiac sign and then we have the nine planets and at best or at max we can have all the planets in different nakshatras. So then we have nine planets in nine different nakshatras and then the ascendant is in a different nakshatra. So at, at max, we can have 10 nakshatras, not more than that. Yes. <laughs> I mean, of course, if you ignore other things like Aruda Lagna and Ghatika Lagna, Hora Lagna and all this, if you, uh, sorry, if you exclude all those, we can have only 10 nakshatras at max. We all know that. But sometimes what happens? We want to start something, yes, which means we want to start an activity in a particular day or any particular nakshatra, for example. Then how do we know that should we start it on that day or not? By day, I don't mean the vara like Somvar, Shukravar, Shanivar, I don't mean that, but on any nakshatra, basically. How do we know that? Yes, for that, we have to know the nakshatras, which means that Suppose you do not have a planet in Ashwini Nakshatra, like Ashwini Nakshatra adds, as I had done the series with Anuradha Ji. It is there in the Nakshatras playlist and it is also there in the join sessions playlist. So you can go to the playlist of Nakshatras and there you can find Ashwini Nakshatra. I have also done on Anuradha Nakshatra with her. And today I had recorded a session on Pushya Nakshatra. It's almost one hour session. So I'll be uploading in 15 minutes each or 20 minutes depending on how many uh, parts it becomes. So now what happens is suppose today for example moon was in Swati nakshatra in the morning now it has entered uh, the next nakshatra after Swati. So then what happens you 
need to know that what are the activities that I can do in Vishakha. Yes, what are the activities which I can do uh, the next day. So then you will get a better understanding of how astrology is working because you will always, always, always have this experience that whatever the nakshatra signifies, when I say nakshatra, I mean moon will transit every nakshatra one day. We all know that. So whichever nakshatra moon is transiting, you will see depending on the dasha to some extent, something related to that nakshatra will play in your life for that day you observe yes and 27 nakshatras are there in total so you can observe that always suppose moon is transiting pushya nakshatra that that's what i was telling anvadha ji in the in, in the video before when we uh, started to record the video that whenever moon will transit pushya nakshatra somehow i have seen either you want it or you don't something related to milk products always come or something related to paneer will always come <laughs> because uh, and it's very surprising i mean it's not surprising it's very funny that uh six seven months back i think one of my friend uh, he's a christian his name is john so this john ended up calling me and uh, he asked me that oh can you please tell me how to make paneer butter masala yes and i was wondering where is moon today and i checked bang on it was in pushya which means that when moon is transiting in a particular nakshatra automatically our mind is gravitated towards all those things yes so that means if we know that today is a good day to start this activity yes so for example there are different nakshatras like sthira nakshatras which are also known as dhruva nakshatras like uttara sada is there yes and then rohini is also one of the nakshatras which th these are very good nakshatras for l uh, starting anything which requires long term sustained efforts yes like marriage or opening a company or uh, purchasing a home yes because they are fixed assets which we have so suppose we know that tomorrow is rohini nakshatra for example i mean tomorrow moon is not in rohini but suppose we know that tomorrow moon is in this nakshatra then suppose we have something to do in our mind yes for example we want to start writing a book for example or maybe open a youtube channel <laughs> then we could execute it on that day yes because those things will have very uh, long term results yes long term efforts are needed in the, that domain but suppose you want something which has to be done very fast quickly yes then there are nakshatras which are known as fast moving nakshatras yes so then we need to do those actions on those nakshatras yes so for example if you want to get something done very fast then ashwini is a fantastic nakshatra because that shows the ashwini kumaras and the horses and they are like going ahead nothing can stop them yes so if you want to plant roots somewhere if you want to go to the garden and plant roots or you want to clean some mess which is there yes sort out some serious mess which is eating away your time like anything then when moon is in mula nakshatra it is a fantastic day to start that because mula nakshatra represents roots and uprooting of things so when you want to uproot something from your life yes suppose there's a device which is there yes and it is not functioning well and you are planning to throw that device away you can do that on mula nakshatra it's fantastic to do it because when you do it in mula you will not have any attachment towards it later otherwise if you throw it in nakshatra like pushya or some other nakshatra you may be still feeling bad oh why did i throw it it was so nice <laughs> yes so when we have the knowledge of all the nakshatras then we can know how to plan each and every day now some people will say oh then life becomes very troublesome now nah, today we can't do this tomorrow we can't do that no it's not like that but if you're planning to do something major i'm saying i'm not saying that oh if you want to go to the market then you should check the nakshatra for that you should you you should learn the nakshatra no i'm not saying that general activities are fine but i'm saying for something specific if you're planning to get married or if you're planning to buy a house or a car or this some prominent events i'm saying or if you are planning to approach an authority, then Magha Nakshatra is very good because that deals with authority, the royalty, the throne. So for these things, we, we should know the Nakshatras. And there are different 
animals associated with the nakshatras there are different sounds there are different remedies there are different temples and so many other things are there so even if we do not have any planet in a particular nakshatra which is which will obviously happen because at max you can have nine planets and one ascendant so there will be 17 nakshatras which you do not have any importance in in your life which you think like that but even that is not true because like whichever ascendant you are all these zodiac signs are falling in some house yes if you are a taurus lagna capricorn is falling in your 10th house sorry it is in your 9th house then aquarius is falling in your 10th house so if the zodiac sign is having impact in the 9th house or in the 10th house how in the universe will the nakshatra within the zodiac sign not have impact now how to know when it will have impact suppose you are a taurus lagna person then saturn will be transiting to through that nakshatra or jupiter or say rahu or say ketu yes these are fast uh, so sorry these are slow moving planets as we know these four so when they are transiting inside your ninth house for a taurus lagna for example in capricorn then you will feel this now within capricorn when now for example ketu is in capricorn so now when ketu transited through another nakshatra within capricorn it affected your ninth house yes and you would have felt the effect in a different way but now when it's transiting through shravan nakshatra you will feel a different effect then when it goes to the previous nakshatra because ketu goes backwards retrograde then you will find the effect in a different way so even if you do not have any planet in capricorn if you are a taurus lagna then if any planet is transiting there that nakshatra's themes will come alive yes whichever house saturn is ruling in your chart so for example if you are a taurus lagna then saturn rules the 9th house and the 10th house so when saturn is transiting in your ascendant for example yes so in taurus you will have the nakshatra kritika you will have rohini also there so when the 10th lord is transiting your ascendant and when it is in kritika then the flavor will be completely different than when it is in rohini so even if you do not have a planet in taurus then also saturn will someday transit rohini or it will someday transit that house someday it will happen <laughs> so then you will feel that uh, that theme is becoming lively in your life so and these are the two reasons why you should study the nakshatras even all the nakshatras even if you don't have uh, any planet in all of them which is obviously not possible so now the most important nakshatras are the nakshatras where the ascendant is placed and where your sun moon and the lord of the ascendant is placed yes then now people ask within them within these four which are the most prominent nakshatras the answer is very simple whichever nakshatra whichever within these four are falling in your kendra or in the trikon they will be more active in your life which means for example suppose you are a capricorn ascendant and your moon is in the 7th house in ashlesha for example and your sun is in vishaka in the 10th house for example libra for example but your lagna lord venus is in the 11th house in jeshtha yes because jeshtha will be in the 11th house scorpio then you may feel that the prominent themes which are playing on in your life are vishakha which has sun then ashlesha and maybe your ascendant nakshatra is shravan now the ascendant the nakshatra of the lord of the ascendant which means where venus is placed may not be very prominent because it is outside of the kendra because kendra will show physical things which are prominent in your life yes so now suppose for you you are capricorn lagna and venus was there in this 7th house yes and moon was also there and then sun was there in the 4th house in aries in ashvini in exaltation for example then all the four would play prominent roles because now sun moon lag and the lagna lord all four are in the kendra yes and suppose sun moon or ascendant lord is in your trines and then the nakshatra then they are sitting in a particular nakshatra that nakshatra 
may not play much role externally in your life but internally it will play a very big role in your life you will because trines are showing ex uh, internal uh, things which are there which you carry from the past yes and kendra will show physical things which we deal with in this uh, cosmic realm <laughs> so now you understand how to s how to know which nakshatra among these four will play a prominent role but the ascendant nakshatra will always play prominent role because that will always be in kendra because that's where the ascendant starts yes the first house so this is how you uh, see and understand why even if you do not have a planet you should know the nakshatras yes so the reason is number one you can decide what to do when and most importantly what not to do when that is also very important yes and the second reason is that even if you don't have planets will transit for your ascendant then you will feel those things becoming lively and there is another reason which is very obvious that is you cannot study astrology without the nakshatras actually it is simply not possible so if you study every zodiac sign then you must study nakshatras to go deeper into astrology so if you want to become a serious student of jyotish then you cannot avoid nakshatras if you are doing then uh, it will take you long time to give uh, predictions and get into detail because nakshatras will exactly tell you what is happening yes so i will start the series on nakshatras very soon and as of now i have started it with uh, anuradha ji so we have covered three nakshatras and the third is pushya which we covered and that i will be uploading and uh, you can watch that and it will be there in the nakshatras playlist which i have all right so these are the three reasons why we should study nakshatras just like we studied the uh, zodiac signs yes so we we don't say right oh i don't have any planet in aquarius so i will not study what aquarius is no we don't say like that so then why do we say those about nakshatras yes now you may not study that is fine but if you want to become a serious practitioner of astrology or a serious student then probably we need to watch them yes even if we do not have any planet all right so that is it from my side if you are new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation then please approach me through my website the link is there in the description below and before i end i would again say god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him okay until next time wish you good luck <laughs> with the nakshatras okay bye bye see you Thank you.